What's up everybody? Welcome to this new episode of MSI Procast. Today I'm super stoked to talk about something I'm very passionate about, video editing. Video editing and likewise video content creation has become super popular thanks to cheaper cameras and platforms like YouTube. So whether you're an amateur, an inspiring YouTuber or professional filmmaker, it's important to choose the right components for your editing rig. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got. As a base, we'll be using the MSI X299 SLI Plus paired with a 10-core Intel Core i7-7900X CPU. For memory, we'll be using a quad-channel HyperX Predator DDR4-3333 memory kit. The graphics card will be the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X 8G, while SSD and storage will be taken care of by Intel and Seagate. Finally, we've chosen to use the new Cooler Master Master Case H500P. And take note of the badass looking fans in the front, which will blow your brains out. This will be fitted alongside the Cooler Master's Master Liquid 240 all-in-one cooler and a V750 power supply. I'm already in love! For video editing, choosing the right CPU and motherboard is the utmost important step. And I know there's a lot of options out there, so choosing the right components can be a difficult choice. Ultimately, your video editing PC should be seen as an investment, just like you'd invest in other video equipment. This computer will last you for hundreds of projects or even several years, so you want to make sure you get it right from the start. MSI with the X299 motherboard lineup for Intel's high-end desktop processors is our recommended platform for video editing. And I'm not talking about fancy features here like RGB. I'm talking about the real deal. This is a motherboard built for multi-GPU support that has dual gigabit Intel LAN ports and an impressive amount of USBs for connectivity. Our choice to go with the 10-core CPU is to keep the budget under control while still making it accessible to enthusiast content creators. Obviously, if you can afford it, the 18-core's Intel Core i9-7980XE would be the ultimate chip to go in here. So if you watch any of our totally awesome build guides, you'd expect us to mount the cooling now. However, for the X299 platform, we'll be mounting the cooling a little later. You'll see why. Moving on to memory. Just like crunching large data sets, video editing is a memory intensive task. The more RAM you have, the more your editing software will make use of it. RAM helps speed up previews, renders, and exports. This HyperX Predator 3333 MHz kit is a great base to start with. And again, if your budget allows for it, feel free to get a hold of a faster kit will serve you very well in the long run. This X299 motherboard has eight memory banks. However, we'll use four of them to fully take advantage of the CPU's quad-channel memory capability. Memory bandwidth doesn't have much impact on video encoding, especially when comparing dual-channel to quad-channel performance. So while I'd recommend to take advantage of your quad-channel memory for the editing process, it's definitely not a deal-breaker for most enthusiast editors out there. It's all about speed. Having a lot of cores and RAM isn't enough to cut it. A serious editing build needs a decent SSD to at least drive your operating system and host your online projects. We'll be using this Intel 600P series 256GB SSD drive. This is an M.2 drive rated to read sequentially at 1775MB per second and write at 560MB per second. Just simply connect it to one of the motherboard M.2 slots and you are done. Your video editing PC is not the kind of system that will be idling most of the time. Rather, its CPU, storage, RAM, and GPU will be tasked with intensive workloads. You must make sure all the parts stay cool even when running at 100%. Cooler Master, who's kindly providing us with a case for this build, recommends to use the Master Liquid 240 all-in-one cooler. With X299 and AIOs, we need to adapt our usual mounting process. There are three main steps to consider. First, we mount the AIO radiator to the top of the case. The idea here is to position it comfortably in the case without hitting any other components. Then we take our prepped motherboard and lower it into the chassis. We secure it to the case standoffs using all the supplied screws. Be sure not to forget to place the IO shield at the back of your case before mounting your motherboard. Finally, it's time to mount the pump slash water block onto the processor. I particularly like how easy it is to mount CPU coolers with X299 motherboards. No need for a backplate here. Just simply take the right screws and directly mount the cooler onto the CPU. Easy. Finally comes the second essential component of any editing rig, 
the graphics card. We've opted here for the MSI GeForce GTX 1080 Gaming X 8G. While there are more powerful models out there, this card gives a great balance between price and performance. The graphics card in any video editing rig is what drives live previews, real-time renderings, and visual effects. If you work with high-res animation footage, you definitely need to take advantage of your options. Note that this card uses two I.O. bays at the back of our case. Be sure not to cheap out and use two screws to properly secure your card. Like most folks on YouTube, I'm working with high quality 4K footage at over 100 megabits per second. These giant files can eat up all your space. So having a serious amount of storage and a backup plan is essential for any video editor. As I said earlier, we're using an SSD for speed. But for long-term storage, a large hard drive is ideal. This 10 terabyte Seagate Barracuda Pro 3.5 inch hard drive should last you for quite a while. It's built for creative professionals and comes with a five year warranty and two years of data rescue service. Also, investing in a case with some extra space can make a lot of sense. This Mastercase H500P comes with a handy hard drive tray to simply add and remove drives. Pro tip, keep in mind that this is just one drive. As the saying goes, the only backup you'll ever need is the one that you didn't make. Finally comes the last piece of our build, the power supply. Even with such a video editing powerhouse, you do not need a monster PSU. In fact, this whole build will use at best 500 watts of power. So as a daily driver with this Cooler Master V750, you'll be just fine. Once the power supply is secured, connect all the components together with the right cables. You can use Velcro strips to tie them nicely together. So that's it, our video editing PC is complete. Make sure to quickly visit your motherboard's BIOS to enable XMP on your memory and you are good to go. Install your favorite video editing software and you are rocking and a rolling. So there are four key components to remember today. One, pick the right components to fit your production aspirations and budget. Two, a fast multi-core processor is key. Three, Get yourself a high-end graphics card. Four, don't underestimate your storage needs and plan for backups. So that's it. Let me know in the comments below what video editing software you prefer and what specs you use on your video editing PC. Thanks a lot for joining us today. If you liked it or learned something, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, let us know why. Thanks for watching and happy editing.